This video is sponsored by Akamai, a little bit more on them later. Now, if you follow our newsletter, this is not going to be news for you. Every once in a while, there is so much news and things happening that I feel like I need to make a whole dedicated video covering what we have in our newsletter. Granted, if you are subscribed to this, this came out on Wednesday, today is Friday, so none of this is really going to be news for you. We really do have a lot going on, including cosmic customizations, a new photo application in GNOME or coming with GNOME 45, I believe, and a lot more. Starting with these cosmic customizations, if you do not know, uh, System76 and their operating system Pop! OS, they've been working on creating their very own desktop environment called Cosmic. It's going to be very similar to their current customizations and extensions that you see on their uh, GNOME version. But the problem with using GNOME and trying to customize it in the extent that they do is every time they come out with a new version, things break and it creates a lot of extra work for them just to try to get things working how they are, are used to working. Now, creating their own and writing it in Rust, which I think is pretty cool, is a lot of work now, but it's gonna save them a lot of headache and breakages later. And of course, appearance-wise, it's looking very familiar as or compared to what we currently get with the uh, Cosmic Desktop kind of GNOME customization here. Some of the things that have been released or announced is the appearance page in these system settings is going to allow a lot of the uh, basic features you'd expect, but these features in there out of the gate is really nice. Picking between light and dark themes, having that switch automatically depending on the time of day, and the ability to pick a accent color. After that color is picked, the user can be asked for four more colors, including the application background, primary container background, interface text palette tint, and neutral palette tint. These are used to form an entire color scheme, giving the user even deeper customization than what we currently see on GNOME. If we go over here to Customizing Cosmic, their blog has these announcements that be, they've been coming out with rather regularly. And we can see some more details on that. We have the appearance between the light and dark, the accent colors, and then those are some of the uh, deeper customizations that I just talked about. And we have some examples here, including this kind of purple tint hue going on. We have the brown that's on the newsletter. We have this really nice green. So you could really, at least when it comes to the color scheming, you're gonna have the opportunity to customize Cosmic exactly how you would like to. We have tiling with a mouse here, which is gonna work very similarly to how their GNOME extension currently works. You can move things around and tile them. You can see some of the options to either split it between this pane, go into various sections within the tiling. Really good features, and we see some more details on how this is going to work here and what moving certain windows in certain sections will do. We're gonna have much better uh, integrations with the actual notification applets, which we can see here, just reduces clutter. If we go down, we have some additional user permission settings. I'm not gonna go over every single thing. This, of course, uh, as well as the newsletter, are going to be linked down below. And just as a quick note, nothing I do here would really be possible without the support that I get from uh, Akamai Connected Cloud. It's really easy to spin up your very own Linode. Actually, if we head back over here, let's skip all this real quick, go down to the newsletter. If you click on Analytics, this right here is hosted on Linode. This is a plausible instance. It's a free and open source analytics tool. You could go check this out if you want to. And if you're interested in setting this up or a lot of different services, I actually have a bunch of tutorials over on the Akamai YouTube channel if you are interested. You can pick between a wide variety of Linux distributions. They have a whole bunch of marketplace apps that you can spin up to easily run your own instances of things. It's really cool. And if you're a new user, of course, you could get that $100 60 day credit. So going back to our newsletter here, one thing that's kind of cool is KDE Plasma is going to be running their wallpaper contest for Plasma 6. Plasma 6 is something I am really looking forward to and do make sure you subscribe as I will be doing a full in-depth video of the changes and some of the stuff worth noting. The prize for the wallpaper contest is a framework laptop, which is a killer prize, first of all. There's some rules uh, when it comes to the licensing of the image, no AI art submissions, at least 3K, some pretty basic stuff. If you're interested in participating in that, you can click the link in the newsletter. Now, GNOME has a brand new image viewer, and it's not necessarily new, uh, Loopy, Lopi, I think. <laughs> image viewer has been added to the set of core GNOME applications as out of the box default for GNOME 45 which is this application right here, which overall it really kind of fits in with the styling and the GTK4 stuff they got going on here. 
It looks really good and it has some other features which we talk about right here. The engine, Glycin, is fully sandboxed even for SVG files. The print dialog is completely redesigned which we can see in this right here. It looks really good. And there's a couple other little news things within GNOME. We saw the release of 4.12 when it comes to GTK, which is kind of the graphical toolkit that they use to build GTK applications just like this. There's new components for developers of GTK-based applications, and it now supports the Vulkan renderer. The support is marked as experimental, but the team says it's now much less of a science project, so it's actually somewhat usable. Now right here, this little paragraph, I like this. If you saw the video I did on OS Geo Live, I am kind of a mapping nerd, and when it comes to GNOME map application, uh, this is experimental as well, they are using vectors now instead of an image. Now this is really good because it will allow custom styling such as switching it over to a like light and dark map, uh, switching how the roads work. There's a lot of different things you could do switching from images to vectors, at least when it comes to mapping. And just like I said with the next version of Plasma, GNOME 45 is getting closer and closer. And again, I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Now this I'm going to briefly touch on a <laughs> bunch of drama. The last like two weeks for the Linus Media Group has been an absolute cluster. If you watch this video here, well, if you're not in the loop, watch this video here. They've been uh, accused of data inaccuracies in a way kind of screwing over some of the hardware vendors that send them products, at least when it comes to misrepresenting and doing improper testing and things like that. And there's been some other drama claiming the whole working environment isn't a uh, very good situation, which overall this r really sucks because I am a huge fan of LTT. I mean, can't really see it, but I got one of their mouse pads here. In the Unraid video I did, I kind of showed off the little custom screwdriver I made at LTX. The big problem wasn't even necessarily that they were making all these data inaccuracies and whatnot. It was the initial response to this video that was pretty rough. But after some major flame from the community, if you look down here, they have a uh, kind of like a, uh, an apology video, which sucks for the new CEO. This is like the first like long form dedicated video that he's uh, been in, that, at least that I know of. Like bro just got hired and he's already trying to put out fires. One of the things that came out that was criticized was something that they said in one of the tours, specifically the lab tour. Now I didn't get to go on the lab tour, but I did get to kind of tour their offices. And first of all, it was super cool, super grateful, but it is not that large of a workspace. And for the amount of content, that they are um, subjecting themselves to push out. I can see the amount of stress and all that that they are under because they have a bunch of different channels and each channel has to put out a certain amount of content. To their credit, there's no way in hell that I could do what they do. They haven't been uploading videos because they're kind of looking at that and uh, it's a good thing that they are doing that. And that's all I'll, I'll really say on that. It's gonna be interesting to see how they go about this and how they come out of this hopefully in a very positive light, hopefully. So with that, if you like this kind of a news coverage type video where I go over the newsletter, let me know down below. If you want to get this information before I could even make a video about it, make sure you head over here, click subscribe. It's real easy. We have a paid and free tier. They're basically the same. This is just how one way to support the work that we do. Again, obviously, if you're interested, the free plan is perfectly fine. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.